Alexander. Please one big applause for now my speaker. Uh, first of all, I'm happy to see all of you here because it's a, a really big country and very interesting. Um, I want to talk uh, about uh, cross-cutting concerns and show all possible ways how to solve them. Uh, before we start my talk, I want to ask you, who knows something about uh, cross-cutting concerns? Please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, okay, five persons. Uh, who knows something about cross-cutting concerns? Uh, I have one more question about who uh, have ever added uh, logging into each public method in your API. API. Or much, much more, better. Okay, about me. Uh, I'm head of software architecture in a company called Alpari. It's uh, one of the biggest forex broker in the world with a uh, turnout about 90 billion of dollars. And I am head of software architecture. Yeah, I worked. Uh, with, I have worked with computers since seven years old. So I have gained a lot of uh, knowledge and experience with uh, how to develop a modern uh, application, how to structure them, how to create it very efficient. And um, <clears throat> I also like very clean code because uh, when our code is clean, we can uh, easily develop it. We can easily support it, but if our code is ugly, oops, not so good. Um, as I mentioned, I'm also of uh, aspect-oriented framework, uh, Go ARP, and uh, now we want, uh, I, I want to talk about uh, my presentation. First of all, uh, I want to cover uh, advantages of object-oriented paradigm, why it's so popular nowadays, because uh, we always use OOP and uh, create great framework like Symfony, Laravel, whatever. And uh, next point will be why OOP has um, limitations. Uh, and what, what are they? How can we uh, use it or uh, try to avoid them to improve our application? And uh, on the next part, I will show you how can you fight with cross-cutting concerns, for example, how to extract logging, how to extract caching or uh, authorization control. Um, I will also show you how aspect-oriented approach can uh, solve cross-cutting concerns and uh, show you some examples. Uh, let's uh, begin with OP. Okay, cool paradigm has a long history of success because uh, our brain is so lazy and cannot handle more than five or ten objects in each uh, moment. Uh, we try to uh, create um, classes, components, modules, and uh, create frameworks on top of that. Uh, we need to do this because if we try to uh, put everything in one single file, Oops, it will be spaghetti. Uh, we want to reuse our code. We want to make it uh, reusable for next uh, project. We want to make it uh, working for us. And we want to improve it to add more features in our source code. Um, but um, it will be possible to do this only with encapsulation. Uh, because we need to put all important information, all uh, private parts into our classes and uh, hide from outside the world. Uh, if we have direct access to private properties or private method and we'll use them from top level source code, our code base will be blotted with many, many errors. Uh, it's a short overview of OP, of course, it's um, very framework for you. Uh, but it's time to ask you a question. Do you think that object-oriented paradigm is a solution for complexity? Who thinks so? One, two, okay. Only two persons think that OP is a solution to complexity. Um, what's your vision about this? I think OP is not so bad at all because uh, we have uh, essential complexity, we have accidental complexity. And OP allows us to solve only accidental complexity because 
uh, we have uh, modern ideas like PHP Storm. But when we try to describe something very complex, for example, in uh, financial applications, we need to describe how to transfer uh, money from one, um, from one account to another account. And we need to think, ah, where should I put this method? Will it be in account? Will it be in person? Don't know. Uh, it's called uh, essential complexity. And unfortunately, uh, OOP uh, doesn't provide us any uh, instruments to solve it. Uh, I want to show you one sit from a famous developer who created Erlang programming language. And what he told us is that if you want just simple banana, <laughs> you will get entire jungle and gorilla holding that banana. Because we need to put that method into, ah, uh, crap. Should be a method drive in the car or in the wheel? Who knows? So what are the problems? Uh, it's a very, uh, OP it's a very good tool for solving uh, accidental complexity, but it has limitation. Limitation in the presentation of real-life processes, real-life structures. And we cannot describe the entire galaxy with simple OOP. We cannot create, OK, class galaxy. It's impossible. Uh, complexity uh, results in a <clears throat> very strong coupling between our components. We need to put star into galaxy. We need to put uh, galaxy into cluster of galaxy. And we always need to connect classes between each other because it's uh, OP, and we need to connect them. Um, sometimes uh, this complexity results in a very, very scattered and tangled uh, implementation because we always uh, add the same code several times. Now it's time to talk about cross-cutting concerns. What are they? Uh, how they influence on our code and how can we solve them. According to the Wikipedia, uh, cross-cutting concerns are aspects and uh, they affect uh, other concerns in our application. A typical example is uh, logging, for example. We want to log something uh, and we have uh, our clean model and we want to implement logging. So here is a small task for you. Uh, task is very simple. Uh, just add logging to each of your public API. How can you solve this task? Just think a little bit. Let's start with clean model. What I like uh, in this uh, concrete method, it's very, very simple. It only contains four lines of code and uh, it's very clear because uh, it's very uh, clear because it respects single responsibility it respects domain drive and develop uh, keep it simple stupid everything but uh, then our boss decided that only administrators should be able to create new users right oh we need to inject one uh, more dependency to our code, it's uh, security, and we need to check if uh, such person has required privilege called admin. And if uh, he hasn't uh, this privilege, we, c we can throw an exception, preventing him from creating a new user. Good. We deployed uh, this code to production in 10 minutes, and um, suddenly one of our admins decided, uh, claimed that Mm, user was not created. How can we prove, or how can, how can we check that a user created or not? Looks like we need to add one more. We need to add login. It's uh, one more dependency to our class uh, called uh, logger. And we need to add just two more lines with uh, before uh, creation and after creation. Great. But what if there is an error, like uh, Muscle has gone away, or connection was dropped, or maybe a violation of, the, uh, of unique constraint? I think we need to add one more try-catch block. And write, in case of error, special information about your 
So our admin will be happy to, to see that uh, user created or not created, and we have all information about why this uh, specific user was not created. Now I want to ask you, uh, who has similar code in your application? Or, and now I want to ask why it's so bad. Uh, let's have uh, let's have a look at next slide. Um, I highlight with different colors each of our method, uh, each part of our method, and you can see that we have green line. Uh, green line is our domain logic, and all other blocks don't relate it to our clean model at all. Z they violate domain driving principle. Uh, they violate uh, keep it simple, stupid. They violate everything. Um, this result in uh, several things. First of all, it's a uh, strong coupling because our user service now depends on uh, authorization service, it depends on uh, logger service, it depends on um, whatever, uh, many, many different uh, dependencies. It, we can also say that we cannot reuse this code easily uh, because we need to extract this logic somewhere and uh, make it uh, reusable for another application and uh, make it uh, working because, um, for example, if we have logging, we have, okay, PSR standard for that, but if we have authorization, hmm, how can we use reuse authorization between different projects, for example, in Laravel and Symfony? It's impossible. And of course, it's difficult to, um, to develop this code uh, later because we need to always remember which concerns we already developed in our method and how to apply them. If you think a little bit about this code, uh, we will find one interesting thing. How can we create delete new user method? Oh, uh, delete, sorry, delete user met method. Oops. Like previous one, we need to copy-paste uh, our logic for security, we need to copy-paste our logic for uh, authorization, for, for logging, for authorization checking, for error handling. And this code will be discovered not in a single file, but in our entire application in services, in controllers, in, um, in every part of, of your application. Of course, it uh, will be resulted in low productivity because uh, you need to, um, to type your boilerplate code and uh, of course it's not so uh, good job, uh, not so easy to add these repeated lines because we, we can uh, lose our focus and uh, miss some part of our application. And of course, we, we can miss, for example, authorization check and uh, our method will be available for, for non-authorized users. Now I'd like to move to the OP ways of solving cross-cutting concerns like that. And uh, first of them is decorator. It's a very famous pattern. I, I think that every one of you know about it. Um, but let's quickly uh, check how it's work. We need to inject our dependency and create a user service with caching that extends uh, original class. And now we can put our authorization logic into this concrete decorator and wrap our concrete class with authorization checker decorator. Great. But we need to always proxy this call to our original implementation. And typically this results in uh, performance loss. And sometimes we can, um, for example, if we don't need to um, perform after the authorization check for a specific method, we need to put um, decorated call into each method. What I like in decorator is that is that we can pass uh, our instance everywhere where original service is expected. 
It's very nice because we can construct a very complex system and build a very, very um, complex architecture. Wrapping uh, authorization, wrapping uh, caching, whatever. Uh, Decorator also keeps uh, single responsibility. Uh, we, we can uh, keep our domain model clean without putting extra, um, extra code. And we have one disadvantage that we need decorator for each combination of interface and uh, concern. For example, if we have foo uh, class and we have bar class, and we want to cache method in foo, we need to create foo decorator, foo cache decorator, and we also need to create bar cache decorator. And we have, for example, a cool system like uh, Aquarius Proxy Manager system for that, uh, to automatically create such proxies for us. But if we want to just add caching into several method, methods in our application, it will be hard to do. Um, there is also one more point, is that uh, logic of caching will be spread between several classes. So we'll be uh, caching in one place, in another place, and we, have, uh, we will have several classes with caching logic. There is a better pattern called mediator uh, or event dispatcher in Symfony. And we have many, many interesting things that implemented this mediator pattern. Um, in order to make our system uh, working uh, with mediator, we need to inject special uh, service called dispatcher. And we need to change our source code to create an event. If we want to make, uh, if we want to add something on top of that, for example, if we want to check if, uh, for example, uh, it's a kernel request for Symfony, we want to check if user is authorized. Okay, we create an event called kernel request, and we can uh, define a listener for that, and we can check if we, if current user has all necessary privileges for that. But this has a price. We need to define listeners that will, will listen for a specific event, and uh, this event will be described in system. It, will be, it, it won't be possible to create another event without touching your source code. For example, I have a vendor library, and I want to make an event in this library to, to, to attach to it, and maybe uh, to log information about such event. But we have, lim we have only specific event. Uh, to, check, to check this authorization logic, we can simply add several lines, and voila. Okay. We will have authorization. Um, I like in mediator because I like mediator because all secondary concerns uh, like authorization can be moved to separate classes like authorization listener and uh, caching listener, and we can just uh, create all necessary events in our application in order to make listener working. Um, of course, mediator keeps SRP, uh, and we can we can put all the logic secondary logic into this block. It's a blah, blah, blah. Um, is it possible to create a system that uh, allows us to define events in our application without changing our code? For example, I want to make an event right now. I want to make a listener right now. Is it possible or no to, to make this system? Probably yes. And, uh, it's called an ARP, uh, it was invented by Xerox company many, many years ago. Um, and this technology allows us to extract secondary concerns and uh, put them into specific classes called aspects. Here you can see a prism with uh, colored light beams. For example, red is authorization, yellow is logging, and the white line combined is our code, final code. Uh, let me present you the Go ARP framework. 
Uh, it was inspired by uh, ASPJ and Spring frameworks. Uh, it, all, it has almost 1,000 Stargizers. For me, it's cool. <laughs> Thank you very much for Stars. And uh, it has over 400,000 uh, 400, installations, uh, compatible with all modern PHP versions and opcache. It's a special point because uh, if you want to create very dark magic sync like AOP, you need to pay attention to opcache because uh, without that, your application won't work at all. In, and one more fact that there are bridges for uh, famous framework like Symfony, Zen, Laravel, and can be integrated into any, any framework or your custom application. Let's take, let's take uh, one more look at our clean model. Um, we have a method, and if we think about this method from the PHP view of site, then we can think about it like uh, an event. So when we call a method, it's already an event. And our event called create new user method. It's very, very interesting to discover that PHP has many, many different events, for example, class loading, for example, uh, property access via magic getters like get or set. We have um, special events for uh, object initialization and much more. How can we subscribe to our event? First of all, we need to describe a notation. Uh, it's a Go OP notation with uh, special syntax. And we just put before execution of method public user service anything. So we, describe, uh, we can subscribe to any method in every class in your application. And the uh, framework will provide you uh, information about this event. It's met method invocation object instance. It will contain a reflection for your method. As well, it will contain special arguments, uh, instance of current object or class scope for static class. And now we can describe our advice. Advice, it's, um, it's something like closure. Uh, it's like uh, event handler for your application. And we can put our logic into this advice with uh, checking of authorization. Um, with this information, framework will be able to change your source code in such a way that when you call user service method, you will get a callback from framework to your method called uh, on before. And uh, framework will Call it. If we compare mediator pattern with aspect, we will see many uh, common things. For example, we have similar initialization. We need to pass our um, service, for example, authorization, or caching, or logging, whatever. We need to describe which events we are listening to. For example, we want to listen to a specific method on user creation. And then we describe our message body, our handler, our listener. I think you're interested in how this works, because it's a dark magic. Moving on, uh, next part, how it works. First of all, uh, Go AOP requires some initialization. You need to uh, define an aspect and register them before uh, calling uh, anything else in your application. After that, uh, engine registers special stream handler for transforming your source code on the fly. Uh, it's not so easy to, to describe how it's work, but uh, you can include this PHP filter any PHP file and transform it on fly. Uh, key moment of initialization is replacing of composer loader. Um, all modern applications using Composer for class loading, for uh, resolving dependencies, but what's 
interesting is that we can use this information and uh, uh, discover which concrete file we need to look at for loading, for example, full service class. In this moment, we have information about file, and we have a special library called PHP parser that will tokenize our entire file and create for us an IST tree. IST tree uh, represents our source code in the form of uh, abstract tree, and we can transform this code with a special library. Uh, actually, there are two libraries. Uh, one of them is GoP uh, parser reflection, and there is one more called beta reflection. Um, but GoP, of course, use GoP parser reflection library. And now we can reflect uh, our file to make uh, changes. We create a replacement for your class uh, with the same name, but with uh, our parent class re renamed. So if you have user service, it will be user service proxy, and a new class called user service will be created in your cache. And uh, we have only simple method over overriding in uh, this concrete case that introduce additional logic. Uh, let's review what kind of interceptors available for Go AOP. What can you intercept? First, it's method interception for public, uh, public method in some class. Uh, it can also be a final class, so Go, Go AOP uh, capable to intercept method in uh, final classes or even in the traits. Uh, you can intercept execution of protected method, method in your classes or even static method. It's also possible to intercept method uh, by annotation. For example, we can uh, add specific annotation like uh, caching or logging and AOP will be applied to each method with such annotation. But uh, AOP can be applied uh, not, um, not, not to math, but to properties. We can uh, intercept access to public properties, to protected properties, and properties um, take it with annotation. Um, to make a complex uh, point cut, we can use also um, uh, special logic uh, operators like AND, OR, or not, and parentheses to combine into very complex, like execution of public method into this class, but not this method, or execution of all classes uh, with um, cache annotation, but not in my private classes, like blah, blah, blah. Here is an overview of uh, pros and cons for aspect-oriented paradigm. We'll review it. Um, OP allow us to keep CRP uh, like a mediator pattern because we can extract our authorization logic. But uh, all secondary concerns are stored in separate classes and we can have only one authorization or caching aspect for entire application. Uh, of course, it's a flexible way uh, to extend, but uh, what's more important is that uh, IOP doesn't require to change your original source class. If your mediator requires to add uh, specific events and add dispatching, IOP doesn't require them at all. But, of course, there are some disadvantages. First of them is no tools to debug AOP code. Okay. No help from IDEA. Okay. Um, there is also an overhead for initialization, but it's very, very low for typical installations on PHP 7 and uh, with enabled top cache. I want to talk about 
disadvantages because uh, when you want to use a tool, you should know about positive effects and the negative effects. Um, in order to make a developer um, happier, I developed a plugin for PHP Storm. Who uses PHP Storm? Okay, I know. Uh, so, uh, what, uh, what you can do with this plugin? First, uh, you can debug anything in your source code with xdebug. Uh, it's very, very simple. Just make a breakpoint in aspect or in your source code, and you will receive a callback from xdebug. Next important feature is syntax highlighting, because point cut is very complex and uh, have its own syntax. I think it will be easier for developers to use a code completion. What's more interesting is that we, um, when we apply an aspect to many, many methods or even classes, we need to navigate, like with interfaces, for example, if we have a uh, logger interface, we want to quickly check which classes implements logging interface. And with HPStorm, it will be just easy. You will get uh, special hints, like I icon, and you can easily navigate to your class. Uh, I want this feature for AOP2, and now it will be possible to navigate from advice method to aspects, and vice versa. Let's move to the practical part. I think it's very interesting to see how it's work. We want to create logging in our application, our big application. And what we need is to define simple notation like that with template, property, and uh, severity. Uh, severity will be by default info. Next one part is to define an aspect. Here we can have simple initialization, we can create logger, we uh, add several uh, processor handlers, whatever, or we can even inject if we use Symfony or Laravel. And now we define our handler. Our handler is a typical class and it has a method called before method execution, and we have a specific <laughs> point cut for that, that all method with logable annotation in our entire application, in entire system. What we can have, uh, also we, we can have uh, invocation instance, uh, and we can easily access arguments uh, we can easily access uh, reflection instances uh, to create a context. Uh, context will contain all parameters for our method, combine it into the associative array, like uh, username, value, uh, second name, value. And then we just log this information into our log file. How can we use it in our application? First of all, we need to import annotation. It's a typical doctrine annotation. I think um, most of you should know how doctrine annotation works. And after that, we put small annotation between our method with template. And when our user will be created, uh, AOP will intercept create user method and automatically perform logging with user, username will be created. Pay attention that we do not inject any logger service into our class. Okay, let's look at how can we create caching. Because caching is a more advanced part. We have a similar annotation, like uh, cacheable, and we want to specify lifetime for our object. For example, we want to store um, 
our result for 10 minutes or, for example, uh, for one hour or maybe one day. And we create an aspect for that. And the uh, handler will be like following. We need to define special around type of advice by annotation, uh, by attention. Around type of advice in aspect-oriented uh, world uh, means that we can replace entire method with our custom handler. And we can decide, should we proceed or should we immediately return from our method without any um, future processing. With such kind of uh, advice, we, we, can, um, we can define a handler that will replace our method in uh, our application with a proxy. Uh, we can check arguments to create a key, and we can use all information about our class. For example, user service, uh, create new user. And we can use this information like cache key to check if we have uh, our cached version of information, for example, here in uh, static cache, but you can use memcache, APC, Redis, or anything you want. What's interesting in this source code is this specific expression, invocation proceed. Um, here we can call our original method, our original implementation, and return a result back to our aspect. If we don't call invocation proceed, our original method won't be called at all. But uh, in the case we miss information about item in the cache, we should invoke our method, take a result, and store it in the cache. And usage is very, very simple. Just one simple annotation called cacheable. And now you just add annotation everywhere in your system, or you can use any any um, any possible join points uh, in your application. For example, if you want to cache all public methods in your class, it's easy. If you want to cache all protected methods in your services, it's easy. Uh, let's have a look at one interesting aspect called async aspect. Uh, I heard today that someone of you asked Rasmus about, huh, uh, will it be possible to use async in PHP? Uh, I think yes, why not? With LP, it's very possible, uh, it's very simple task. We can define annotation and uh, we can create an aspect. Aspect will intercept execution of each method, uh, take it with async annotation. And we just spy which method we should call into our stack. And we do not proceed to our original method, so we can uh, just check which method should we call, which arguments, which object instance, and uh, make a reminder for ourselves to call it somewhere. For example, after a fast JI finish request. And we can return a promise. So our original method won't be called, and we return a promise that our method will be uh, executed somewhere. If you look at an aspect, uh, then we can see uh, interesting thing. Uh, we declare a shutdown function and uh, register our handler that will be able to iterate on our objects. But we should do this after FastCGI finish request. After that function, uh, all our uh, output will be flushed to the client and all um, 
all hard method like logging, sending messages, sending emails, creating databases, tables, or what, whatever will be performed in background in your PHP FPM worker. And we can just use a reflection method to call our instance with arguments that we spied previously. If, we, if you want more example for IOP, uh, I want to show several possible ways how to use it. For example, for profiling. Uh, who knows about pin by extension? You should definitely look at this extension because uh, it's very, very um, useful feature and uh, extension uh, developed by Badu company. And it provides asynchronous uh, interface for sending all metrics from your application to Muscle server, but in background. And you can easily uh, receive all information, all statistics about how your method called, how uh, how much time it took to uh, perform method execution. With AOP, it's also possible to create a feature toggle pattern. Um, just put an annotation and check if your feature is enabled for this method, okay, proceed. Otherwise, we bypass the entire logic of our code. We can use AOP for authorization, and we can use AOP for transaction control, it's easier, just define start transaction, execute original method, and commit transaction. No changes in your code. Uh, one more interesting way of using LP is uh, designed by contract programming. Have you, listen, uh, have you uh, know something about design by contract? No? Yes? Raise your hands if Okay, uh, but design by uh, contract is very complex, complex system, and um, it requires um, separate talk about how to use uh, PHP deal library, for example. But if you want to check, uh, it's also available on GitHub. And uh, one more interesting way of using KOP is testing with aspect mock library uh, developed by uh, Michel Bodnarchuk. Uh, I think it's, it, will, it will give talk tomorrow about conception. And uh, with LP, you can intercept any method, any property, or any function in your code base without uh, changing. So, Let's move to the conclusion and quickly look at the main points. First of all, OP is a nice, stable tool, but not for essential complexity because we cannot, uh, our brain is not capable to, uh, to define our system in such a way that every part will be in the right place. Um, I want to ask you to pay an attention to code scattering and uh, code tangling, and I want to ask you to prevent uh, this situation in your application. If you want to add caching, please do it, but in a separate class. If you want to add authorization, please do it, but in separate class. Don't put uh, this logic in your common class and try to extract them to separate uh, classes for keeping them in one place. So uh, if you want to change your authorization system, it will be only one single class, and you can easily replace it with, for example, if you want to use it with Symfony, okay, it's listen. If you want to use it with Laravel, okay, use it with Laravel. And of course, if you want to use uh, if you want to solve this issue with enterprise application, then use AOP. Uh, now I want to switch to the to the code because I think it's better to show 
this information one time. And I want to show you our business service class. Here is our create user. Okay. And now I want to call create user. Please uh, note that we just uh, display hi new user. And we want to log this information. I will drop it. And uh, to add logging, I just put OK. We can navigate to our aspect, and we see that uh, we have an attached aspect called before method execution. We can navigate to our create user. Let's call one more time. And we have a log txt. OK, we have information about logging. Ah, I, I think I missed template. Better now. OK, much better. And now we have information that user PHP server will be created right now. And let's move to caching part. Uh, we have a method called get, get user. And for example, it can use slow API, for example, SOAP. And what we want, we want to cache it. And we just add cacheable annotation, and we can see that uh, cacheable aspect already applied to our method. And now pay attention to calling slow API method on second, on second call. It disappeared, but we, uh, we call it right here, second time. AOP uh, adds this item into the cache via caching aspect. And second call will be sorted from our cache. Let's move to a sync aspect. For example, we want get user method to be asynchronous. We remove uh, caching information and just add async annotation to our method. And now, what's happened? Have you noticed that our method called immediately without one second delay? We, we can see that page reloaded uh, in uh, milliseconds. Uh, this is due to our uh, async aspect because all information is uh, served after fast CGI request is finished. Uh, in this way, you can define uh, any complex logic, for example, use a promise library from React or from uh, any, from, okay, it's, I think it doesn't matter which library do you, do you use, but uh, it's possible to integrate AOP with any framework or any application. And uh, I, have a, so, I have a vision that it will be possible to create fully decoupled framework or uh, application without injecting dependency directly into your class. You can create an application that will define a listener in runtime with aspects and will glue each part of your application into one single point, into one big application. Why do we need to, to define kernel request events in Symfony. But we can define in runtime, for example, before execution of public method kernel handle, please give me a callback. I want to check if user is authorized. And with this information, with this system, you can create any complex system, any complex uh, application. So. I think uh, it's the end of my presentation. 
And thank you for the attention. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Any questions? possible to nest uh, the aspects, for example, if you want to add uh, the loggable aspect to the async aspect. Is that possible with your framework? Uh, sorry, could you please repeat? Uh, for example, uh, is it possible to nest more aspects into the previous one? For example, if we intercept uh, the request, yes. so it, it becomes an asynchronous request, and we want to add some logging to that uh, asynchronous uh, aspect. Is that possible? Yeah, yes, it's possible, but uh, not in this demo because it's a very simple implementation and requires uh, serialization of closure. Uh, but yes, it's possible. So you can define a different annotation, different text in your method, and all of them will be applied. And also, you can define an, an order uh, for each annotation and each aspect. For example, you want uh, caching to be topmost. I think uh, mm, with lower priority and logging last one. So you can define a priority like in uh, event dispatcher. I am answered your question. Ah. Thank you. Here. Hey, uh, to stick with your example of the logging, um, what's the point of having a, an annotation that contains the exact same information as having a log call that would also be exactly one line in the function body? You know, if I, I mean, I agree with the whole point about making this a object somewhere, a class somewhere that does this logic of logging. Mm -hmm. But what's the advantage if I actually put this into an annotation or every function that does this? Isn't the point of AOP that I don't have to do that because they define in one place that it should be logging all of the following types of functions? Yeah, thank you. So the question is, why uh, do we need to put uh, annotation with the same information uh, like uh, we put in method body in traditional AOP way? Um, I think uh, the answer will be following. Uh, actually, we do not need to put annotations uh, for example, but what we typically do is apply LP logging to entire classes. For example, we want uh, to apply logging to our API message, API classes, and we do not uh, write uh, information about user will be blah 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 created. We need to uh, write just simple information about we want to call method, concrete method, uh, with arguments and concrete arguments. Uh, this can be done fully automatically without uh, touching your source code. So if you don't want to use an annotation for logging its correct way, uh, you can just apply, uh, apply AOP directly to a specific class or apply it to interface, for example, if you want to define logable interface, then you can define an aspect execution of each public method for classes that implements logable interface. And LP will automatically apply it to each public method without any annotation. So it's possible to use logging without adding this information, just for example, just for presentation. Thank you. More questions? Uh, hi. Uh, you mentioned authorization is one of the things uh, that we had to do. Um, there is sort of middlewares that would be able to handle some of that. Um, what is your opinion on, on using middlewares as opposed to doing it the way you suggested? Uh, so, uh, the question is, uh, why do we need AOP when we have uh, middlewares, for example, in, uh, um, in different frameworks? Uh, 
I think middleware has a limitation because uh, you can use middleware for concrete class. For example, if you have middleware for request, it will have method to handle. But what if we need to uh, create an instance of our class and cache each public method? So if you create a middleware, you should uh, implement the same interface like your original class. And in this case, you need to write the same method for this interface with caching information. It's a point why you cannot uh, pass instance of uh, object wrapped uh, with middleware to, to the system where original class is expected or original interface is expected because you will receive fatal error about uh, receiving uh, instance of blah, blah, blah instead of instance of user service, for example. So mediator is like a decorator pattern, I think. It's the same. You cannot uh, create uh, middleware for everything in your system, for each class in your system. Otherwise, you need to remove a type hint from your API. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Um, I have a question regarding uh, the performance impact. So there is a little treatment before the execution of a method. Is there an impact only on the methods that are decorated somehow with IOP, or there is a constant overhead with virtually all methods? Or is it just the one where you're using IOP, there's a little overhead? Okay, uh, thank you. So the question is, what's the overhead of uh, using uh, OOP for class with one method intercepted and uh, another one is not intercepted, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, typical overhead for AOP, for Go AOP, is about uh, 7 milliseconds for initialization. It's a fixed size uh, overhead for bootstrapping AOP. And that's it. All, all other, um, all another um, uh, performance drawbacks only apply to the method that intercepted. For example, if you have a method uh, with additional aspect and method that uh, without aspect, then there, there will be no overhead for calling your method without aspect. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much.